If you've got a paint job to do, the right type of brush can make all the difference. When you opt for latex paint, it's best to use a paintbrush with synthetic bristles. They're typically made of nylon or polyester. If you're painting with oil-based paint, you can use either a synthetic brush or one with bristles made of natural animal hair. For natural bristles, this factory uses pig hair imported from China that arrives in bundles, sorted by length. Each paintbrush contains up to five different lengths. This bristle structure makes the brush sufficiently stiff. All five lengths go into a specially designed mixing machine. First it combs the bristles, straightening them out and removing any curved hairs. Then it spreads the bristles flat and mixes the lengths together. Now a worker takes a handful of bristles from the mixer and pats them on a vibrating table. Like human hairs, animal hairs have a root and a tip. The vibrations make all the roots line up flat. Each handful goes into a storage box until it's time to install the bristles in the ferrule, the steel band that goes around the paintbrush. This machine makes the ferrules. It shapes a thin steel strip three to four centimeters wide. Rollers imprint beads to make the strip more rigid and a herringbone pattern that is purely cosmetic. Then a blade cuts the strip into pieces that are long enough to wrap around the brush. The machine bends each piece around a forming horn, then joins the ends in a strong lock seam. Hammers flatten the seam and the ferrule is finished. Back to the bristles now. A brush making machine will join them to the ferrules. Workers load the mixed batches of bristles into one of the machine's feeders and the ferrules into the other. The machine picks up the required amount of bristles. Transfer jaws grab the tips and insert them in a ferrule. A vibrating device called a patter pushes the bristles in straight. A continuous strip of cardboard feeds the next part of the equipment. The machine parts the bristles, cuts off and slots in a piece of cardboard. This centerpiece, as it's called, creates a well inside the brush head to help hold the paint. The machine then pulls the bristles out to the proper length, leaving about half a centimeter inside the ferrule. Once the brush heads come off the machine, workers pick out the loose bristles. The lightweight paintbrush handles are made of plastic pellets. A vacuum loader sucks the materials up to a molding machine, which melts the pellets at about 205 degrees Celsius. The machine then injects the molten plastic into handle-shaped molds. Five minutes later, the machine ejects the handles from the molds. Workers attach 30 handles at a time to sticks and hang them across paint vats, then lower the handles into the paint slowly to avoid creating air bubbles. The first coat is a primer. After half an hour, the handles are ready for the next coat. This time, the vat contains colored paint. It dries to a matte finish in 30 minutes. The third vat contains a clear lacquer. This coat protects the paint and makes the surface glossy. Now it's time to glue the bristles to the ferrules with strong epoxy glue. It seeps down into the bristle base. Workers now load the finished brush heads and handles into an assembly machine. The machine inserts a handle into each brush head, shooting two to three nails into each side to secure it. Finally, a printing machine stamps the company name onto one side of each handle. Paintbrushes come in a wide range of widths and thicknesses providing different strokes for different folks.
Norman Brakey, a Canadian, invented the paint roller in 1940. It revolutionized painting. But Brakey never got rich because he lacked the financial means to defend his patent. Over the next 60-odd years, the paint roller, with its replaceable cylindrical refill, became the primary painting tool alongside the paintbrush. The refill is a tube covered in fabric made from either polyester fiber or lint-free acrylic and nylon fiber. Regardless of fabric, all refills are made the same way. The fabric is processed into a 7.3 cm wide strip. It goes into a machine called an automatic tube winder. It first applies epoxy glue to the surface of PVC plastic tubes. As a tension bar pulls the fabric strip taut, the machine winds the fabric around a tube. An air jet pushes aside the wound fabric to avoid bumps as more is applied. Once the tube is covered with fabric, the machine simultaneously wraps the end and the start of the next tube in masking tape. Once the glue has dried for eight hours, the tubes enter a machine that cuts them into several refills. The tube spins as it passes, so one small cut is enough to sever it. One tube produces nine 19 centimeter long refills or seven 24 centimeter long refills, the two standard sizes on the market. The next machine first runs a wire brush against the fabric. This lifts and fluffs the pile. Then it makes a beveled edge on each end. To fluff the fabric further, a high-speed spin at 3500 RPM. During all these operations, a vacuum sucks away loose fibers. Meanwhile, the paint roller handles take shape. An injection molding machine shoots molten plastic into handle-shaped cavities. A built-in cooling system hardens the plastic within seconds. The handles are made of polypropylene, a tough thermoplastic, and some colored polyethylene, a lightweight thermoplastic. Now that the handles and refills are made, it's just a matter of assembling them. These plastic bearings hold the components together. The assembly is entirely automated. The bottom bearing goes on first. It rests against the part called the shoulder. Next, the refill. The bottom bearing slots right into the open end of the tube. Now the top bearing goes on. A metal clip locks the bearings and roller in place. And voila, a 7.6 centimeter roller for painting windows and trims. This factory also makes disposable plastic paint trays and tray liners. They're made of polyethylene tariff phthalate, PET for short, a type of plastic that's strong yet flexible. This thermoform machine heats a PET sheet, then vacuums it into a tray-shaped mold. Fans cool and harden the plastic. This heat mold and cool cycle takes just 30 to 50 seconds, depending on the tray thickness. The molded sheets go into a cutter. It excises the trays in one slice. The factory grinds up the leftover plastic and sends it back to the supplier for recycling. This factory also makes roller refills for applying solvents. Instead of PVC, the tube inside is made of a tougher material, either chemically strengthened cardboard or polypropylene. 